my channel wouldn't be here so i really do appreciate it sincerely from the bottom of my heart welcome to cars in korea i introduce newly released genesis hyundai and gear cars as you saw from the thumbnail today is the comprehensive review of 2024 hyundai all-new santa fe hybrid all-wheel drive or H-Track calligraphy trim that's got the loaded option. The ultimate, the best package you can get from this all new Santa Fe. The second row has a captain seats. Therefore, this is a six seater all new Santa Fe. This all new Santa Fe is available in three different seat configurations, five, six, seven, two plus three, two plus two plus two, two plus three plus two. I have over a dozen video with this all new Santa Fe, exterior, interior, POV, test drive comparison video the list just goes on and on this is a comprehensive exhaustive review after test driving the vehicle for the past week and i have accumulated 360 kilometers 17 hours and 10.8 kilometers per liter on an average please keep in mind this is put together with crazy accelerations and stops which i do with all of my test drives so please do Bravo. keep that in mind 15.5 kilometers per liter for two-wheel drive hybrid whereas this all-wheel drive hybrid gets 14 kilometers per liter i certainly can believe and think that i can easily milk the mpg out of this car when driven properly my commuter drive today is a good mix of frequent stops and goes and a lot of rush hour right now and congested traffic and all where hybrids shine the most as we all know right so the more the motor engages less engine will use therefore less gas yielding higher mpg so uh, fingers crossed hopefully i will at least hit the 14 kilometers per liter mark and you will see how actively the car uses the motor to charge the battery and also utilize the battery on your city drives throughout my test drive i never once saw battery going below 50 percent it is actively charging the battery and transition between the motor and engine engagement is just beautiful it's absolutely beautiful the best is that i kind of felt it by the noise not the vibration or the feedback the car would actually give to me unlike the older hybrids there's a whole menu dedicated for eco driving this vehicle which a hybrid is all about pause the video right now and read off the description simply put you can actually change all of the settings within the car to maximize the hybrid system out of this car when you do have the chance to get better mpg the car will let me know to lift off my foot from the accelerator comes in really handy and of course it's gonna get all added up to the mpg also there is the smart regen and you can just set the regen brake at auto it will use together the navigation inside the vehicle in order to use the adequate regen level speaking of which this car is available with five different region levels you can have it at auto which is the feature that i just told you about and when I pick up the speed right now, overtaking a vehicle, which you do from, which you need from time to time, right? The car has no problem of doing it whatsoever, as you can see. There is the power and I can immediately feel all of that all-wheel drive, H-Track power, all the grip being delivered to the wheels thanks to the front-wheel based all-wheel drive which is known as H-Track. I could actually see all real-time the power distribution where each of the torque is being delivered. I will cover more about this in the E-Motion which is hybrid exclusive using together the motor to better the drive and ride and performance of the vehicle. Again, I'll I will get back to this if you're curious about it jump to that video right now using the timestamp just looking at the needles too you could see how actively the car was recharging the battery hence using the region brake so when you put the region brake to be the strongest i almost want to say it kind of is on the level of the i pedal i pedal is found on hyundai motor group car evs which is equivalent of the one pedal driving from other manufacturers once i set it to the 
strongest. I almost felt like I'm just using the iPedal one pedal driving of an EV. Unlike the older hybrids, where there were marginal differences in between the different levels. Not only can you set your manual preference of the region brake level, but they do, each of them do have very distinctive strength when it comes to the levels. If you are not fond of the jerking motion that the motors create when they are using the region brake, you can always turn it off and you can use the least of the motor if you are in need of providing, I don't know, maximum comfort possible or if you feel like driving more like in the internal combustion engine way. Well, this gently ties together to my next topic, which would be the ride quality. So you see, this is when the hybrids shine the most. Just like an EV, it is using the motor. It is only in the electric mode and you can just listen to how quiet the car is. Essentially, this car is just an EV right now, an EV that you just don't have to charge. <laughs> Hybrid is heavier than the internal combustion engine. It depends on the how many seater configuration you get. On an average, it's about 70 kilograms heavier than non-hybrid, or I should just say a gasoline Santa Fe. All that added weight is of course from the added drive shaft of this car being the all-wheel drive plus the battery packs hidden underneath the second and third row seats of the vehicle. However, I don't really feel that much of a difference. Honestly, I can't really tell the difference at all. I was looking into it up close and I did see the center tunnel kind of a hump. It's not ridiculously tall unlike the older time vehicles. I do see a little bit of a hump where the shaft is going through, but Santa Fe did a fabulous job of putting the batteries, I guess. So there is no more crazy hump unlike the older EVs or hybrids for that matter. I'm not trying to praise that added weight here, but because of the added weight on the rear, it kind of actually balances out and gives more stability and comfort when it comes to driving this vehicle. Some of you guys probably know what I'm talking about right here. If the car is heavy, a full-size saloon or full, full-size flagship sedan, none of the cars out there, let's say G90 for instance, or Mercedes S-Class, Audi A7, BMW 7 Series, none of those flagship sedans are light. I kind of be careful about what I'm about to say here, but well, bear with me, I'm not, a, I'm not a physicist, but as long as vehicle performance is pushing the car forward, you get the beautiful, elegant driving experience of those um, full-size sedans. I'm never saying that Santa Fe is like that of those um, Genesis G90, no, but this Santa Fe hybrid all-wheel drive model definitely, certainly, clearly, I can tell you with a confidence that it feels different from just the petrol model. It is heavier, however, motor actively engaging and pushing the vehicle forward. It is just beautiful experience to have in a congested city. And plus, even when you're coasting, you get a great MPG out of this two-ton family SUV. And also, despite the box shape this car is, which the designer very himself calls it as, it managed to get a beautiful coefficient of drag 0.29 CD. Those CD under 0.3 figure is only found on EVs these days, but Santa Fe managed to get it. And thanks to that, and also the active air flap this car has, adds a big time lowering that coefficient of drag which translates directly into MPG, the fuel efficiency, as well as NVH, noise, vibration, and harshness, which is a number one factor directly converting into your driving experience pleasure inside this vehicle. Be it behind the steering wheel, be it in the passenger seat, be it in the second row captain seats. So let me talk about the E-Motion, which is hybrid exclusive for Hyundai Motor Group cars. So essentially they are utilizing the motor in order to cancel out and counterbalance unwanted movement within the vehicle. For instance, the pitching, the vertical movement of the vehicle going up and down, you can immediately think about 
going over the speed bump or the potholes, right? So when the vehicle actually goes over such condition, not saying this car is equipped with road preview suspension system, no. The car does not get the ECS electronically controlled suspension, no. It is static. However, it will read the road condition. There is just so many ways that this car can do with the radars and sensors all around the vehicle, right? The car is reading, getting information about the road condition 24-7 as long as it's moving and once it does detect such road condition it will use the motor's movement to cancel out that pitching motion you can find out all about that on the website but the most important thing is of course when you drive this vehicle you can actually feel that immediately i assure you i actually was really curious about to find this out myself when it was first introduced back then it had the first gen now this car is equipped with second generation and it's only going to get better and better right on top of that i gotta bring out my cheat sheet right here because there are just so many texts put behind this emotion i don't want to deviate too much but i just have that beautiful ev9 right in front of me and i just can't help it's a beautiful car oh my god so gotta show you like this it's absolutely beautiful there's this big category of emotion and there are two subcategories within the emotion e dynamic drive and e comfort drive and let me talk about the e dynamic drive there is this e dtvc which stands for dynamic traction vehicle control and when you actually make a sudden maneuver the brake and the motor work together to better the steer and handling using the torque vectoring think about the moose test when an obstacle or when you need to make a sudden maneuver with the steering input a lot of people actually do have trouble undoing the steering wheel input that they have done already first and foremost they're not used to doing it a skilled driver would actually do a counter steer wheel accordingly in order to get the car's balance back but this is when the tech e dtvc kicks in feeding more steering wheel input that the driver failed to do so and this has been found throughout many accident and data this will better and enhance your safety when such emergency pops up underneath e dynamic drive the second one is the e traction it will maximize each of the tire traction making a cornering this is done by controlling the torque of the adequate wheel which will enhance steering and provide a dynamic driving pleasure so the second big category within the e-motion is the e comfort drive and there is the e ride gen 1 and gen 2 e ride gen 1 composes of the pitching movement that i explained earlier when you're going over the speed bump the motor will reduce to control the pitching the vertical movement giving you the comfortable drive experience e-ride gen 2 is when you actually accelerate the vehicle will control the motor to deliver minimum disturbance of the unwanted vehicle movement when you are actually accelerating and picking up the speed now that the toughest part is over hopefully i want to show you the mpg that i managed to get all right so i I have clocked 10.8 kilometers per liter for the 22.4 kilometers and driving for an hour so rush hour indeed as you can see and it is actually the very average i got throughout the course of the entire test drive but you see i know i'm not the best person in the world to get this best mileage mpg reading on these cars at least on 30 more minutes to go so i will give you my final reading there fingers crossed hopefully Hopefully I will see at least somewhere around 12 kilometers per liter fingers crossed this is the final chapter of the day I want to make some points that is exclusively hybrid first and foremost the motor engagement even right now the vehicle is only running using the EV mode and picking up the speed right now so just like so when you need to pick up the speed just tap slam on the accelerator it will use adequate amount of the motor and put together the engine and one more time 
So when you floor it, you can actually hear the loud roar of the engine 1.6 turbo kicking in. It works beautiful with the six speed automatic this hybrid has got. So 1.6 turbo gasoline model has eight speed wet DCT, dual clutch transmission. Hybrid, it's hooked up with the six speed automatic. And I also have seen the EV mode being active up to 80 kilometers per hour. I don't know what the maximum would be for that speed, but it just is absolutely amazing without a doubt. And accelerating. So you hear the engine engaging and it just picks up the speed no problem. It's just so pleasant, comfortable driving this car around in cities and wherever you go. So I want to wrap up today's video by answering some of the questions you guys left me in the community post as well as my previous videos. I try to actively communicate with my viewers and subscribers. Thank you very much because if it wasn't for you guys, I wouldn't be here. My channel wouldn't be here. So I really do appreciate it sincerely from the bottom of my heart. I actually have all the questions you guys gave me about the Santa Fe right here. This person could not find the measurements of the trunk opening of the Santa Fe. He, she asked me about this question of several times already well first and foremost i'm sorry you couldn't find all of that on the world of youtube I'm surprised um nobody actually covered that well i'm pretty sure all the other youtubers and reviewers did not have the time never had enough time with santa fe like i do and that is one of the reasons why i started my channel in the first place being in the mother country of korean cars duh <laughs> so i get to actually see Genesis, Hyundai, and Gia cars faster than many other many other people around the globe it reviews videos in English. I actually saw the opportunity and that's the reason why I started my YouTube channel in the first place. Thanks to you, I actually have the very detailed information measurements about this all new Santa Fe. Hopefully, you finally have the answers you are looking for. I would like to know about the real world MPG, so I will definitely cover that at the end of today's video. Right now, I'm reading about 10.5 kilometers per liter, 10.8 accumulated with 380 kilometers of driving the vehicle. And my friends have been test driving this vehicle as well. They were able to get over 14, 15 kilometers per liter easy the blame is on me i'm not the most fuel efficient guy when it comes to driving a vehicle and the question also asked me about if it's able to haul four to five people inside the vehicle i certainly would say so but of course there is always going to be that extra added weight so you will feel the difference and the car will respond differently however it really works beautiful together with the motor the hybrid has you can drive this comfortable beautiful driving place to the passengers as well hybrid hands down provides the best driving pleasure by far in any type of Santa Fe this I think anybody everybody would agree it really feels like it's a almost like a different car even a petrol two-wheel drive Santa Fe versus the hybrid is a different car it's a different car when it comes to the driving pleasure the tow hook does not come standard when it comes to the Santa Fe but you certainly can there is not a precise reading that I was able to get if I do I will include in the video right now you can certainly tow stuff behind this all-new Santa Fe no problem the all-wheel drive system on the Santa Fe is just amazing please please do check that video out because I personally was blown away by what the Bravo. performance this all-wheel drive was giving me I was lucky to test it out on snow icy and mud and it really worked beautifully when you used the adequate terrain modes so please please check that out and there was a question about the hda2 versus hda1 i did mention it in my previous santa fe review on a straight line you don't really feel much of a difference but when it comes to turns and corners you will see a huge upgrade and improvement hda1 if you already have it on your car you guys know that you almost have to give it up when you are exiting or merging into a tight corners and turns on a freeway but not so much with the hda2 there are corners and turns 
and exits and entrances that this HDA2 clears without a problem. And I will include the footage right now. I did manage to get one of the severe turns and corners and exits and entrances that this HDA2 nailed. So including the footage right now. And next question is about the suspensions, how comfortable it is. Like I said, it is the best one hands down by far. It is the best one out of all the Santa Fe that we've been getting thus far, hands down. Anybody, everybody would agree if you actually test drive the vehicle back and forth in different cars. Thanks to all that emotion that I just listed in today's video, that differences strikes you directly. You will be able to feel it right away. And if you are debating between the different trims and motor combination, engine combination, because of the ride, I 100% strongly encourage you to get the hybrid. It's almost like a completely different car when it comes to the driving pleasure. I'm not saying the internal combustion engine model is poor with the suspension. No, you can certainly enjoy the beautiful drive and comfort with the car, which was all demonstrated in my first test drive video. It is great. There's no argument about that. It just, well, first and foremost, I'm a hybrid guy. I really like hybrid cars and Hyundai has done a great, beautiful job with this model especially. So that is the reason why I strongly encourage you to get that. So the next one is asking me about the pure electric mileage. Like I said, throughout today's video, the car will actively use the motor whenever, wherever. It will just be using the EV mode. Like every time you look at it, the car is most likely in the EV mode. So it's actively, very actively using the EV modes. And how long can the AC last before the engine kicks in? I actually did measure this also throughout the test drive and it really depends on the condition. I sometimes had engine turn on after just a couple of minutes, but then I would have the engine completely shut off for like good five, six minutes. It will really depend on the condition of the vehicle and environment around it. So there is no set time, like a five minute buffer. No, the car will actually turn on and off accordingly. But do keep in mind that this is winter time below zero degrees Celsius here in Korea and also throughout my test drive. Probably the engine will remain shut off during even longer during the summertime. Does it have a heat pump? I can simply say no. Uh, it is only available to EV cars at the moment from Hyundai Motor Group cars. And also there was a question about the region braking levels and uh, I'm, I'm sorry I missed it out on the Tucson. Well, I will test drive the Tucson hybrid when I get the chance. Well, thanks to this question, I was able to focus and tell you the region brakes that you can actually set the different region brakes and they are very different as I have mentioned earlier. And next one, does the hybrid feel sluggish? when loaded up with people and luggage inside. I actually had four people inside the vehicle with a mild, moderate amount of luggage in the trunk space. I did feel the car getting heavier, of course. That was good, 200 kilos extra added. So I could actually definitely feel that. It wasn't sluggish at all. And I also have tested out the vehicle going uphill and all. There was no power shortage whatsoever. Everything was just really pleasant. I had no problem with that whatsoever. The safety features such as anti-theft, functionality and all. So simply put, the fingerprint recognition system allows you to drive the vehicle without the physical key. What the fingerprint recognition system does is that it allows you to drive the car without this key with you download the app, hook it up with the fingerprint recognition system within the vehicle, then you will be able to unlock the vehicle, start the vehicle, drive the vehicle, lock it, have all the safety features running without the physical key. And of course, you need to have the smartphone that has your information inside. So hopefully this answers your question. And last question of the day, will there be a calligraphy hybrid? Yes, I am driving one right now. And the HUD on the hybrid, all HUD is unavailable on all of the Santa Fe, regardless of the car being a hybrid or patrol.
does the HUD forward Android Auto directions. Um, I have iPhone, as you can see, so it was Apple CarPlay, but I'm pretty sure it's the same with the AA as well. The HUD does not associate with the Apple CarPlay, unfortunately. So it only shows you the information that the car gets from the GPS and the navigation. So that's it for the Q&A. Once again, I post test drive vehicles on the first day on community. So I will make sure to answer those at the end of the video, just like I did today. That's it for today's video on this all new Santa Fe hybrid all wheel drive. I'm pretty sure this is gonna be my last Santa Fe review, but it's already been a few times I said that in the video, so I'll just save it. I will get to drive the Santa Fe sooner or later. That I can tell you for a certain when the Palisade rolls out and everything. So I guess I'll see you in the next video. Meanwhile, if there is anything else that you are curious about, just feel free to drop it in the comment below. If you have been watching this far, well, thank you very much. Don't forget to subscribe and like Cars in Korea if you did. Do not forget to check out my earlier all new Santa Fe videos. There are over a dozen videos on my channel. So I'll see you over there, I guess. Bye bye. I don't know. I just don't want to go. Really feel like this is going to be my last Santa Fe video. <laughs> I just have to mention there is a beautiful Kia EV9 right in front of me. I recently also saw from the article that Kia EV9 won the North American uh, Cody, the car of the year. So congratulations.